Let's get, get this off. Is the sound working? Let's do a sound check. What's my delay today? Right, it's a bit of a delay. Where's my sound? How can I hear it? Ah, that switched off. Okay, that's fine. 18 second delay. I can work with that. Problem is I had to change the latency and because of the latency change. All right, guys, look, uh, so you guys want to go straight into, um, look, I got a couple of questions that were sent to me. Like, and I know that um, people can kind of like send me these kind of questions. Um, what would also kind of help is um, just because I'm, I'm really short on time at the moment. So if you guys could just attach the, um, I know some of these questions, you guys get answer schedules at the back. Uh, just flick me a, a message or something like that with the answer schedule in the back as well. And then I can break the question down uh, a lot more. Um, but what we'll do is, I think the first question that popped up was 20, did we do the 2016 integration 3E? can't remember I need to have a look at that one so we can start with 2016 integration 3e so where is wherever that is uh, 2016 I'm just trying to think which question it was uh, apply into assessment schedule um, I don't know if IDEK is here he picked a beautiful question yesterday which kind of made us think quite a bit uh, question 3e okay so we'll try and do two questions today as usual like um, I'm gonna depending on how fast I can finish this in let's have a look 2016 2016 differentiation 91578 wait didn't we do this question yesterday I think we did 2016 3 2016 oh sorry we did that we're looking at 2015 3e okay 2015 3e maybe I should just go through like all the 2016 questions can, can we actually do that should we actually finish off all the 2016 questions so that we don't go and just keep going back and forth on this so is there any other 2016 questions today ah, of course not 2015 questions 2016 we did that what about this one here should we do 2016 how about this question here this is a, a optimization question. Twenty fifteen question. Okay, let me have a look at twenty fifteen then. Twenty fifteen three E is oh yeah this one oh jeez okay we might actually keep one we haven't done an integration question yet because yesterday i think we did a complex number question and a differentiation one so what we'll do is we'll start with the integration question so we'll actually start with this one here first uh, and then once we do this question we will do this one which is 2016 as well all right, so this is question 2016 3E. And then after this excellence question, we will actually do 2016 2E. Okay, let's 
load up the question. Why aren't you working? Oh, yeah, here we go. So this one was 20 integration. What was the paper? Sorry, just need to check again. This was 2016 question 3E. 2016 question 3E. Let's get started. I've got everything up here ready to go. Um, wow, so this is actually not a bad, it's not a bad excellence question to be honest. Okay guys, so let's get started. I think that's given us enough time to actually um, kind of people to come and just settle in for, to catch up with this last um, excellence question here. So what we actually have here is blah 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 find the value of y when x equals to pi over 2 okay so we've been given a differential function we've got to um i guess we've got to integrate it we got to find out what the c value is that we're going to end up with and then once we get the c value then it's basically just a substitution thing welcome izzy welcome okay so <laughs> No, Sam. I'm sorry. I got. I, I promised the level threes. I'll work with them because they've got some. They've, yeah, we just got to get through this, man. And I got to get through this in the next half an hour. Both of these questions. So I got to fly through them. Okay. So what we're gonna do is, um, there's. Whenever we do differential equations, right? I, I think the one thing that you guys have to um, try and remember, is you have to try and bring all the y's to one side, and keep all the x's to one side as well. All right. Now, what you have got the problem of is that you've actually got e to the power of y plus sine x. So our first step really is to kind of simplify simplify that. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to write this as sec x times dy dx is equal to. We're going to split that. All right. We're going to split the e of y. Because it's plus, we can actually say e of y times e of sine x. All right, and if you think back to your level one, this was what one of the first thing you learn about indices: a to the power of a to the power of m times a to the power of n is m plus n. So this is like that first rule that you learn in um, algebra. So that's what um, that's what's actually happening here. So we've got e to the power of y and e to the power of sine x. Then we've got this sec x on the left hand side. Now, when you think about it, sec x like you've got sine x on the e right now we know that when we differentiate sine x we actually end up cos x the problem with sec x is that well we don't really have anything that differentiates to sec x i think we have like sec x tan x and so on but like what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the sec x and replace it with one over cos x so we got one over cos x dy dx ey times e of sine x because what we now can do is bring all the y's to the left hand side take all the x's to the right hand side because what's going to happen here is we're going to get dy divided by e to the power of y equals cos x multiplied by e of sine x dx all right now i'm hoping that you guys can see the link between sine x and cos x because remember if you want to integrate 2x e to the power of x squared this just integrates e to the power of x squared because remember when you actually integrate exponential functions you got to divide by the differentiation of whatever the power is so in this case you can kind of see that link right it's like cos x and sine x well it's related because when we differentiate sine x we're going to get cos x so on the left hand side what we've got is e to the power of y we're going to bring it to the numerator when we do this becomes e to the power of negative y dy 
equals i'm still not integrating anything i'm still just writing the equations all as is okay now i'm ready to integrate this so when i integrate e to the power of negative y i'm going to still get e to the power of negative y because remember that's the rules about exponential and you got to divide it by the differentiation of whatever the power is and in this case when you differentiate negative y we're going to get negative one all right we're going to put that at the bottom there and as for the cos x e to the power of sin x we know that e to the power of sine x stays as is but it's kind of like a little cheat thing that I do, right? Like I, I kind of still put my cos x there. But because I have to divide by the differentiation of sine x, which is cos x, so I know that they're going to kind of cancel out each other. So that's why I kind of like, you almost kind of ignore it. <laughs> okay? So then we have e to the power of sine x. And of course, don't forget your plus c. All right? So guys, I think this is probably... Um, the most challenging part of this question because once you get to this part then it's just figuring out what the c value is and then figuring out what the y value is so how do we do that um i'll tell you what i'm actually going to give you guys a couple of minutes just to have a go by yourself just to see if you can get to the final answer and i'm going to give you guys like maybe at time is 902 at 905 i'll actually go through the full rest of the answer And in the meanwhile, if you do have any questions up to this far, I'll actually put some line numbers and you guys can ask me, how did you go from what happened in this line and what happened in this line? No, 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 banana swirl. That's only if you're doing X to the power of something, all right? If you're putting X to the power of something, then you would add one to the power and then divide by the new power. But when it's exponential, it always, stays the same all right when you differentiate exponential functions or integrate functions those functions will always stay the same when you differentiate it uh, exponential function you multiply by the differentiation of power but when you integrate it you divide it by the differentiation of the power that's all Hopefully that made sense, Banana Swell, for you. Now, if you end up getting Y is equal to um, zero, then you're pretty much on the money. Oh no, she's oh damn it. That's not good. In line four, don't you integrate cos x? Uh, Bolski, thank you so much for actually asking me that question. Because I'm going to, I just wanted, I was literally waiting for somebody to ask me this question, all right? Because, um, because this is what happens. Like, look at this. So I'm going to rewrite this whole integral of cos x e sine x dx. Now, the thing is, if you notice, uh, you can actually say that this is going to be e to the power of, I don't know, I'm going to put this as some sort of um, u. Let's say I'm going to put this as u then this will be u dash because remember if u is equal to sine x then u dash is equal to cos x so i know that i'm going to eliminate that cos x and that's why i don't have to actually worry about um differentiate like working it out at all um c value looks like yeah you might be on the money there it's negative 3.7 tom yeah you're on the money there uh then it uh at the moment i'm doing excellence to questions t at the end of the night till exams except maybe on i'm not sure about friday saturday i haven't decided yet but i'm just doing excellence question all the way through how did i get to line three from line two um so i moved the dy ey i moved it across here so it gets divided by 
and this entire cos x dx comes to the numerator so it's actually getting multiplied um, so that's what happens with that cos x dx it actually ends up there and then ey ends up at the bottom there happy to help eva all right look i think that's looks like most of you guys are um is one over e to the power of y the same as e to the power of yes tom yes it is e to the power of y um when you actually uh put it in the numerator it becomes e to the power of negative y so if you have like it's kind of like this if you remember one over x squared can be written as x to the power of negative two so that's exactly um what it is uh turbo i prefer complex numbers because I, I just i really enjoy complex numbers yeah but anyway look let's kind of carry on with this question we've been given that when x is equal to zero y is equal to negative one now i know that a lot of you guys like to actually uh, and i'm looking at you tom all right you actually calculated that negative 3.7 i'm actually going to tell you right now that you don't actually need to do any kind of calculations with particularly this this um question here all right and i'll and i'm going to kind of show you guys how it actually pops up but like if you have a look at this um well actually maybe you do need to do it but like i'm going to try it anyway without a calculator so we know that negative one is y and x is equal to zero so i could actually rewrite this as e to the power of negative negative one divided by negative one equals e to the power of sine zero plus c now e to the power of positive one so that's going to be e to the power of one divided by negative one is going to be negative e equals e to the power of sine zero now sine zero is equal to zero so i'm going to get e to the power of zero now any number to the power of zero is going to be one and i've still got one to the, like e to the power of one so i can actually write c is equal to uh negative e to the power of one minus one so that's six seven eight nine ten so if i go to my equation my equation is actually negative e to the power of negative y is equal to e to the power of sine x plus c which happens to be negative e to the power of one minus one line four to line five samuel i actually integrated um, there so that's what i did okay so now the question is actually asking when x is equal to pi over two find the y value so x is equal to pi over two what is the y value so we've got negative e minus y equals e to the power of sine pi over two minus e to the power of one minus one so we've got negative e to the power of minus y equals e to the power of sine pi over two when you put in the calculator you're going to get one minus e to the power of one minus one so we've got minus e to the power of y e to the power of one minus e to the power of one is zero we're going to get negative one so we can kind of keep going here right get rid of the two negatives we're going to get e to the power of negative y is equal to positive one so the only way when you have a, any number to the power of something equals to one is that that something has to equal zero so then we're going to say that y is equal to zero so that's 11 12 13 14 15 16 and 17. <laughs> nah true this calculus is, is a good bit of fun man so all right guys i will um i've changed the latency in my um stream so there's like about 20 second delay at the moment so I do apologize if my answer comes late to you over 20 seconds because I was playing around with something and I don't think I can actually change the stream setting back to norm ultra low. So as you can see, um, Tom, I know you kind of used a calculator for that, um, but you don't like majority of the questions like these kind of proof questions and stuff like that you should be able to kind of do that without a calculator um but you know like there's nothing wrong with um nothing wrong with using a calculator as well so there we go uh let me know if you have any questions before we actually move on i've got about i need to time this because i know that there's a 20 second delay so i will wait for 20 seconds before moving on to the next question so that's 53.
Yeah, Tim Lad, sometimes they put some... Um... Yep, 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 Danderman, that's fine. Yeah, you could actually take... Um, you could actually do that with Alan, but once you simplify it, though, like, I don't think you can do it straight away at the beginning. Oh, we're not doing induction, Master. Master B and GM. Cool, guys. Our next question that we were talking about is... Um, this one here, which was from Differentiation 20, 2016, and I think this was question 2E. I'm not the king of maths, man. It's just, uh, just doing a bit of things here. All right. So, if you have done this question before, I do apologize, but um, it's just I know that I did this a while back. Question two e. of height is that base of the cone is s below the x-axis like how do we even start these questions is probably what you're thinking i'm looking at it and going it's like how do i start this how do i start this what are all the things that we have okay so we're trying to figure out the volume of the cone right so i guess that's the first thing we're going to start with now volume of the cone equation is in your exam so we've got volume of the um cone is actually one third pi r squared h now in yesterday's tutorial that we talked about these excellence questions in differentiation now the hardest part about these differentiation questions is actually coming up with that initial formula now if you come up with that initial formula then you're pretty much sweet after that right because think about it differentiation maximum you're going to get an equation put it differentiate it put it equal to zero and actually solve it all right that's all you got to do but the hardest part is actually coming up with the equation so yeah as you, as you said Tom yeah it's the first few steps that you got to get right so how do I go about starting a question like this so I'm gonna put down um, my volume of my cone which is one third pi r squared h all right that's from the formula sheet that's all good I need to get rid of h all right, I need to get rid of H. It's not going to work for me. Okay, but what I do know is that the height of um, this cone is actually from here to here. So there's something that we already know. We know that this cone is actually inside like a sphere that's actually six centimeters. So we know that the distance, I'm going to highlight a few things. So the green part of the cone is actually worth six. All right, I hope you guys can see that. Then the S, the S, the S, the S, which is the blue part is from that middle part to the, um, to the actual bottom of the cone, right? So straight away, we can see that the height is actually going to be six plus s I hope you guys can see that because the height of the cone is going to be 6 which is the green and then s that's actually going to be in blue all right so hopefully that kind of made a little bit of sense there what we actually did now the issue that we have with this question is we replaced h but we got an s that's the problem because if you think about it I can write my volume equation now. A volume equation is going to be one third pi r squared, but instead of h, 
I'm gonna put six plus s. And we are back at the same problem that we had at the start of the question. Because at the start of the question, we wanted to get rid of h. But by getting rid of h, what ended up happening is we've actually got an s. So we need to actually um, figure out how to get rid of the s now, all right? So what do we actually know about s? And I think, man, I really hate this uh, normal latency. I'm gonna go back to my next stream. I'm gonna go back to ultra low because like 20 second delay is just like way too much. I can't actually um, keep up with the comments. Okay, so we're gonna try and get rid of the S right now. Now, this is where it's gonna help you guys. And, and this is something that I've noticed with all of these um, excellence questions in differentiation, right? If you think about it, majority of these questions, they actually have like some kind of um, object inside, a, inside another three-dimensional object. Now, what I would like you to do is we're actually gonna um, create this as a two-dimensional shape. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create the circle as a two-dimensional shape where this is gonna be six, negative six, negative six, and six. And I know it's a terrible circle, I'm, I apologize about that. But the one thing that I'm gonna tell you guys though is if there is a, um, we wanna actually figure out what this point here is. I'm just gonna pick a random point, right? Because that's the cone, because the cone's gonna look something like that. So if we wanna pick this point, this green point, I'm just looking at this green point right now. If we wanna pick that, normally you would say that as X and Y, because that's what we always have done in the past, right? Any point on that um, circle is gonna be X, Y. But there's a slight little change, and I wish I had drawn the circle a little bit better, but um, I'm gonna try maybe moving the God, that's even worse than before. But basically what's happening is, the, I'm gonna have to use some highlighters to kind of explain to you guys. Normally, this is your X distance, right? And then if you look at your Y distance, that's gonna be the part in red. So that's what, I, I hope you guys can see the X and Y, how that actually happens. Because X is along the X axis, Y is along the y-axis but we're gonna replace this with s and r because the blue part if you think about it is actually the radius of the cone from the center to the edge of the the, the cone is going to be the radius so that's what the blue part is and as for the red part it's actually the distance s and I hope you guys can see that because if you can see that then you, your problems just became like, the, you, this next step is just gonna make sense. An equation of a circle is x squared plus y squared, and this one it's six squared. But because we are using s and r, we can write this as r squared plus s squared is equal to six squared. Now guys, you need to let me know. If you don't understand this part, then this is where we're gonna get cramped up. But like, I'm gonna pause for a second and let me know if you guys understand that, because if you understand that, we are pretty much good to go with the rest of the question. Okay, you gotta yell out to me which part you don't understand, Samuel. <laughs> okay, let me put some line numbers here. Uh, we've, I think you guys were all okay with that. So which part are we actually missing out? Uh, 10 lad, I don't think we can simplify that anymore. Um, the little little radius is is what we're looking at cool so i'm gonna keep shuffling on because i need i've got another thing that i need to do later on today so um the main part like r squared 
Um, Samuel, that's actually the equation of a circle. So that's something that you would have done in level two. Uh, like you would always have like the equation of a circle is x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Create a triangle under the axis of x. Yeah, you could you could try that. that I think I don't know how that'll work out, but like that's another way you could do it. But anyway, I'm gonna keep carrying on, guys, because I'm just looking at the clock and um, I need to call a little bit early today. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write down r squared is equal to six squared minus s squared. Uh, Sorel Shand create a triangle under the x-axis of the x. Yep, I see what you are doing. That could work as well. Um, that's another way of doing it. So if you ca carry on with it, and if you get s equals to two, then you're pretty much good to do as good to go as well. Now the last bit of clue for you guys is this right here. It actually says find the value of s, which actually maximizes the volume of cone. So it'll be really awesome if we can actually leave your equation your volume equation in s so what i'm going to do is i'm going to rewrite the volume equation which is one third pi r squared uh, i think we had six plus s but because we have r squared which actually equals to six squared minus s squared we can write this as one third pi uh, six squared is 36 so 36 minus s squared and six plus s and I think, guys, we're pretty much done with this question after this because all you have to do is expand this bracket, differentiate, uh, put it equal to zero, which I'm going to do real quickly. And then we'll call it a night after that. So we've got V is equal to one third pi, 36 times six. Uh, my head is not working. 182, 16 is it? Could be completely wrong. Yep, 216. So 216 plus 36S minus six x six s squared and then minus s cubed so we can now kind of um, simplify well we don't need to simplify we can just differentiate this i'm going to differentiate this but here's a little tip for you guys one third pi you can just kind of leave it out for now and differentiate whatever's inside the bracket. So it's gonna be zero plus 36 minus 12 S minus three S three S squared. All right, and remember once again, I told you guys for these kind of questions, you don't actually need to use um, a calculator. You might just be able to kind of like keep going with it. And because we know that the maximum volume happens when V dash is equal to zero, so we're gonna write zero is equal to one third pi bracket 36 minus 12 s minus three s squared. So get rid of the one third pi to the other side, it becomes zero. So zero is equal to 36 minus 12 s minus three s squared. I'm too lazy at this moment right now to solve this quadratically. So I'm just gonna go straight into equation polynomial degree two no degree two degree two and i'm going to put these numbers in which is minus three minus 12 and 36. now when i do this i actually get s is equal to two and negative six now s can't be a negative number so we have to say that um, s is actually equal to positive two as <clears throat> you can't really have a negative s here because i think it doesn't work um realistically it doesn't work because if s is equal to negative seven then you're going to get a cone that's like really really tiny okay so i'm going to put up some line numbers and then i shall call it a night guys because it's just been like a very very long day and then tomorrow will be another long day with the level ones so give me a yell out if you are um, having any problems otherwise i will be calling it in a few minutes
no worries guys so um, how did you get the step one and two um, ten lad if you look at general equation of a circle like you know how you have um, straight line equation is y equals mx plus c so when you look at a general equation for a circle that's actually x squared plus y squared equals r squared so that's why I kind of like created a circle and created it as r squared plus s squared equals six squared line one and two um gagster hopefully i kind of answered that question for you as well how do you interpret s in, the, in a way i was a little confused um all i did was like i think i wanted to when i looked at the question it said find the value of s which maximizes the volume right um and then basically at that point um yeah, once once I actually said find the value of s, I just wanted to make sure I get rid of h and s, and I think that's what I was trying to do there. <laughs> oh yeah, Bosky, yeah, actually that's a very good point because if you guys look at if you forget your equations, go into conics, and if you go down there, you will get the different variety of questions, and there's your circle equation x minus h squared, and oh, is that why you are asking for h and k? Oh right, it makes sense okay okay i'm sorry i know someone was asking about h and k before in this one there's actually no h and k because the center of the circle is at zero zero so that means h and k is going to be zero zero fitting mirror going through a corner of a pathway bolski we're going to do that question tomorrow all right so we're going to be doing like uh two excellence questions a night leading up to the um exam Um, Andre Mamaradlo, Mamad, the reason why we're doing that is because we're looking at the equation for the circle on the outside so that we can actually fit the cone inside. So we actually need the equation of the circle and then use that equation to find the edge of the cone. Uh, Duckworth, is that the mirror question, is it? 2015 yeah let's do the mirror question tomorrow somebody i'll leave this running so that i actually know that we'll just do this question tomorrow yeah we can do the mirror question tomorrow all right guys look uh <laughs> i don't know which message that is i can't see it but um i'm gonna actually um leave you guys at that uh, hopefully like I, I hope this helps just doing like two questions a night um, I would love to do three, but by the time I get to um, I get to the end of the night, I'm I'm pretty shattered. Um, ten lad, I would say why not have a go? Um, you might it might work, um, but I let me know if it works. I mean, there's a there's a very good chance it could work, but I'm I'm just not sure. That's all. I would probably do like like oh no, you would have to get a hypotenuse, and it can get a bit messy. So yeah. All right, guys, I'll leave you guys at it. Um, just going to have to go and get some shut eye and I'll catch you guys tomorrow to try and do those, um, what do you call it? Those last, there's a couple of more excellence questions, all right? Um, I'm sorry, and, and I know like some people want to do like um, merit and achieved questions, but the reason why I do excellence questions is because the excellence questions, if you get one of them correct, um, if you get one concept correct, it's like, you know, you end up getting like a excellence, which is e po e eight points. Um, and then we should be kind of like good to go. And, I, and it also covers a lot of like, um, achieved merit parts as well. So it kind of like covers everything. So maybe this is what I need to do moving forward is like, just do excellence questions. Yeah. Cool. Um, have a good night guys and i will see you guys um tomorrow all right and um, and whatever exams you have till then um good luck for it and um keep chipping away we're nearly there at the end of the year <laughs> no i need definitely need sleep all right guys thank you see you next time eh?